Barbara Bush, Houston Literacy Foundation, recently launched their My Library pilot program that will provide almost 600 elementary students access to books they can read. Those kids will receive that special gift tomorrow just in time for National Read Aloud Month. Here with how you can get involved, we have Dr. Julie Baker Fink, president of the Barbara Bush Houston Literacy Foundation. And we got to say hi, Mrs. Bush, because she watches. I hope so. <laughs> so this is such a great program because it's what I didn't realize is it's so inexpensive. For $30, someone can sponsor a child and give them a stack of books to read. Tell us how this program works, Julie. So one of the things that we did was we reached out to children's book publishers, one of them, the largest being Scholastic, but then also two local Texas-based um, tech publishers to negotiate pricing for children's books. And again, you know, we're placing these in the homes of economically disadvantaged children, and so they've been very generous in negotiating pricing. So some of these books retail for more than $20. Wow. Um, but we've been able to um, negotiate the pricing. So children go online, they log in, and look at the catalogs. So they're basically like creating their own registry, but they create, we call it a wish list. So they're creating a wish list of books that they want to read, whether it's topics of interest that they're passionate about, whether it's a character that they're excited about, or um, you know, a book that they maybe have seen in the library but haven't, don't have it there in their own home. So we're really wanting them to go in, create a wish list, and then members of the community can go online to the same website and sponsor a child. And those, those children, we're delivering those very six books that they want in their That's wish genius. list. Awesome. So, so the child is actually choosing the book yes. or books they so want to read. And they, they can get like all the ones that their other classmates are reading. Or they can, or they can I've seen some fourth and fifth graders when they were signing up, we were, were piloting this at Browning Elementary school in HISD and someone's like you get that book and I'll get this book and then we'll switch. <laughs> oh that's so they're being very strategic about it too. <laughs> they're negotiating and how deal. How did you come up with this model Julie because I, I mean we, we've featured you know book sharing programs before where children are just sort of handed books but just this customization why did you guys decide to model it this way? You know um, part of it was that you know research shows not just the value of access in books but the empowerment that children can have when they get to pick their own books and they're more likely to finish the book if they've chosen the book themselves mm. um, and read more often and become lifelong readers. And so we have, there are so many great organizations um, that are helping to place books in the home of low-income children, but we wanted to take it just a little bit step, a, a step further in um, both bringing brand new books to children, um, but empowering them to make the choice of which books they want, but then also kind of making the most of the dollar of generous donors in Houston because, you know, you can't go to to any bookstore or Amazon and find the types of books that we're, you know, that we're able to provide through the foundation and our, our um, publisher partners, six brand new books for $30. Well, and if, when you teach a child to read, I mean, you really are changing that child's life, life, their entire life, and then in some cases, their family's life. Absolutely. You know, um, low literacy is intergenerational, and so if we can inspire young, young readers, whether it's through a character, like we had Clutch come out to, the, to a school last week as part of Read Across America Day, um, you know, whether it's um, a caring adult or a peer, um, someone, anyone who can inspire a child um, to pick up a book, read with them, and so you know, obviously National Read Aloud Month is another reason why I'm here, but you know, just to enjoy the, the relationship and the bond that can be form through reading together is just so valuable. And Julie, you've been on our show a number of times. We've discussed this a little before, but reading is something that a lot of us just sort of take for granted. In Houston, though, I think many people would be surprised to know that we actually have a very high illiteracy rate. Can you just sort of paint the landscape for us? Sure. So at the adult rate, we have about one in five Houston area adults that are functionally illiterate meaning they have a difficulty um, doing daily tasks and getting around things that, you know, caused us to be able to get here today and, and to be and have like that dialogue. Just like reading street signs reading. and stuff. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and then when you look at school-aged children, um, we have 60% of children entering kindergarten each year lack foundational reading skills. And by third grade, which third grade is such a critical milestone in the child's development because it's when we transition from teaching them how to read to teaching them to learn, and one in four Houston children failed to meet even minimum 
um, proficiency levels on the state exam. And so it's a crisis, you know, that we must intervene on. And, you know, we're not really trying to create rocket science. There's so many great strategies, some that are practical, well, like putting books, the, in the, books in the hands of kids. Well, we got to quickly mention this upcoming event on April 20th, a celebration of reading that's going to be at the Hobby Center. Um, the Bushes are hosting it. So yes. make sure we get that information out. And for more information, you can go to uh, bushhoustonliteracy.org. Do 